The other side of this long standing passionate conflict, the Palestinians, hundreds coming together today, peacefully rallying in support of their people. Kelly Kennedy continues our team coverage tonight with the latest and Kelly, a lot of emotion with this. Chris, there certainly was, and I spoke with dozens of people, including several Palestinian Americans, and they tell me, of course, they don't agree with the violence. They don't want to see anyone die on either side, but they did point out that this didn't come out of nowhere. They tell me their families have been fighting for their homes, for their basic human rights, and for their freedom for decades. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Hundreds of people marched through the streets of Ohio City Monday to support the people of Palestine. Hands off Janine now! Hands off Janine now! No one wants this violence. No one wants to see blood. No one wants to see people die. Omar Kurdi tells me his grandmother was forced out of her home by the Israeli government in 1948. She died in 2020 without ever having a chance to go back home. There are so many like her. More than 1,500 people have been killed on both sides since the Hamas militant group launched a surprise attack on Israel over the weekend. To get to the root of the problem, you have to look at those 75 years of occupation, displacement, bullying, racism. Maybe this is an opportunity to get Israel to sit on the table and actually negotiate real peace deals. These protesters are calling on the United States to cut military funding to Israel immediately. How do you want to stop a war if you're continuing to fund to fund their military. Chan Samad is Palestinian American too, and many of his loved ones are 5,000 miles away in Palestine. I recently spoke with one of my uncles who's overseas, and you can hear the bombing campaigns going on by the Israeli uh, uh, F 16, like fighter jets in the background. So it's a really dire situation. Fatin O'Day's parents and mother-in-law live in Palestine. Her father-in-law passed away a few days ago from cancer. She says her son never got to meet him in person. This occupation, it affects every part of their daily lives. Uh, my father-in-law had to ask for permission to travel within Palestine from his occupiers to receive the cancer treatments that he needed. And that last woman who spoke is also the interim executive director of the Council for American Islamic Relations here in Cleveland. They're going to be having an event in support of Palestine this Wednesday at 1230. Reporting live in Cleveland, Kelly Kennedy, 19 News.